Wouldn't it be so cool if you could see what a buck was doing for 24 hours a day over say six months time and have a large sample of these bucks that you could look at and say, this is what this deer is doing at this day, this time of year, uh, at this time of day. Let's, let's look at uh, specifically the, uh, the behavioral states by time of day. Pretty much any uh, educated, experienced hunter knows that deer are not nearly as active in the daytime as they are at night. You see them out and about a lot at nighttime. And you hunt with emphasis on the early morning and, and late afternoon because you know deer are going to be more active then. But isn't it cool that we can say with certainty during the dawn, 20% of a buck's behavior is spent walking or 20% of his locations are spent walking about 40% are spent feeding or potentially tending a doe and then about 40% are spent bedded the the most dramatic change is between the morning the dawn and dusk versus the midday as far as hunting activity is uh, concerned even in the that dawn period when we tend to see deer 40% of the time, the bucks that we're wanting to see are actually still bedded. And then let's look at the, the movement, these behavioral states across the months of the hunting season. And in Mississippi, we have uh, October and early November is all archery. And, and then we generally start gun seasons. In October and November, 10% walking, 35% feeding, and 55% bedded. Now that shifts dramatically when we get into December and January. December and January are, are a major flip from October and November because December and January is the time of our, our breeding season in, in Mississippi. So they cut out their bedding time, keep their feeding tending time the same, and increase their walking. Now you might think, well, why is there feeding and tending time the same as it was in October and November. Well, we're not differentiating what they're doing. They're just acting like they're either feeding or tending. And I, I would propose that during October and November, their main activity is feeding. And then during uh, December and January, that's a mix of feeding and tending does. And then uh, in February, we have a, a major flip again. Their feeding finally increases uh, to a little over 40% from 35%. So they go from a 35% feeding or tending October, November, December, January, and then in February they bump up about 5% more time, and I guarantee you then that's spent feeding. They're trying to, it's that post-rut recovery. The bucks are uh, lost probably 25, 30% of their body weight, and so they're spending their time eating. Now let's take a look at these behavioral states broken out by those six weeks of the breeding season and I'm going to talk about early rut, peak rut, and late rut. Now during the early rut, which is the first two weeks of that six week breeding season, uh, this early rut it has about 15 percent of the breeding so there is breeding taking place but not a, a lot of it. And their walking increases during the early rut up to about 25 percent of their time. Their feeding stable about 35 percent and their bedded is about 45%. Then the peak of the rut, their walking increases a little bit more, up to about 28% of their time. Feeding is relatively stable. Uh, they trade out some of their bedding time to increase their walking during the peak of the rut. And then the late breeding season, their walking uh, drops down significantly. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about what those adult bucks are doing when you don't see them. And uh, we don't see them either, but those collars are working 24 hours, six months, September through February. And uh, after the fact, we get to learn so much about the adult buck behavior. And I hope you'll be able to take some of this information, be a better hunter, and have uh, happy hunting, courtesy of the MSU Deer Lab.